Hello, welcome to the Omega 13 podcast. My name is Omega, and and today's guest features features Neo Geo now, a a up and coming YouTuber that specializes in Neo Geo content, from King of Fighters to Samurai Showdown. That is all. I hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is the Omega Katana, and this is my go my host here, Neo Geo now, really good YouTuber, one of the best on YouTube. Seriously, I'm not making this up. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's really, it's really nice for me to say that. I'm really honored to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just like really hyped because of my first podcast. And and thank you for taking your time, even though you live in Morocco or something like that. The mid, the Middle Correct. East cuts like a different time zone over there. It's like really, it's like close to midnight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And and, bef- and before we begin, my name is Omeka Katana. I'm a big, huge gamer. I love fighting games. I love Neo Geo. Look, I have like Neo G- Geo stuff on my computer, my PS4, my Neo Geo Mini. Yes, I got a lot of Neo Geo crap. That's, that's, that's good to hear. You know, it, uh, it's uh, people keep saying, uh, you know, like you see that online that SNK and Neo Geo games are not big in the US, but uh, you know, like seeing how many fans are actually from the U.S., it really has proven that theory wrong, to be honest. Exactly. It's mostly like underground, basically, at best. Correct. Yeah. Can you see me in the camera here? Yep. Okay. It's basically, basically, as, as the stereotype is, the ne- SNK Neo Geo or is not popular due to like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. But over time, when you go on Twitter or some forums, there's at least one or two or five American Neo Geo fans, and they're really passionate. That's correct. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's it's true that SNK games are, are definitely more popular in like Latin America and then Europe and Middle East. But it's still it's still a huge following for SNK games, and, and there's a reason. I mean, if you if you watch that King of Fighters 15 teaser when it happened in uh, in, in at Evo, you know, it was a lot, you know. It is an international event, but a lot of it is uh, many people are from the U.S. And you can see how the crowds were cheering and getting excited for that small, yeah. you know, like teaser that we had. Yeah, I wonder what was Crispy Kaiser's reaction or the SNK's devs when they showed that trailer to Evo, that little trailer to Evo. They probably must be like, shocked. what? They're fa-? They'd be like, what? They're fans in the U.S.? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they, I, mean, I thought, I thought we are forgotten after it went bankrupt back in 2000. Exactly. I mean, they 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 definitely were aiming at international, you know, because Evo has been watched from pretty much everybody in the world, you know, like fighting games fans. But but that crowd reaction shows that that people in the U.S. actually are fans of SNK and looking forward to their next game. That is wonderful to hear. And everyone's all hyped for the new KOF. But let them take their time. They're a small company. They're still getting around the ropes of making games again after making Pachinko for almost 10 years or so. And, and my first topic of the podcast is basically how you got into like SNK games and whatnot. But let me tell you my side of the story first. How I got into SNK games is basically was watching Neo Geo cabinets as a little kid. And due to my broke butt, cannot afford, get, cannot, get, cannot get any quarters from my mom because... Basically, when you ask for quarters when your your mom, sometimes your mom says no and whatnot, I just look at the cabinets and especially the Neo Geo cabinet because because that amazed me from seeing Metal Slug and Samurai Showdown. Those floored me and wished I could play those as a kid. And and when I was overseas, my dad and I was looking I was looking around like like I was walking with them in the sook, basically the mall or the shops in the Middle East or so. And we managed to see an, an S- Capcom vs. SNK 2000 Millennium Fight, or Capcom vs. SNK 1. And I said to my dad, Dad, can we buy this? And he, which he did. And, and my, me, my, me, my dad, I watched my dad play that game like hundreds of hours, basically. <laughs> forgot how much. It was on the Sega Dreamcast. And I was, I was floored by the SNK characters because they're not cliche because whenever they lose they sometimes have those quotes like she's for example yuri sakasaki whenever she loses she said i'm sorry father which i did not know back then till now yeah it's like 
like, whoa, they have personalities? And how the yes. characters look at times. And before that, I was, my, my, my parents were, p- parents rented like from Blockbuster, the old video store. And it was like, and, and it was the Fatal Fury OVAs by Obari. And my dad loved them very much. That's how I got into Terry Bogart. When I was a kid, I played Terry Bogart still to this day, thanks to those OVAs. <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, it's, uh, well, it started, I mean, I, um, I grew up in the you know, 80s, late 80s, and I'm, I'm, I was born in 82. So around the late 80s, early 90s, you know, like it was the, the fighting games, you know, appeared. You know, like I didn't, I didn't play, for, like, for example, the first Street Fighter, I didn't even know it existed. But I saw this, you know, Street Fighter 2 at the arcades. I remember, I remember that day I was really, you know, it was like really amazing concept, one versus one. And then, and then it was not until I got, it was a friend, I had the Sega Genesis at the time, and a friend gave me the first Fatal Fury game. And I thought it was really cool. I mean, it, compared to Street Fighter 2, I mean, in terms of, of, you know, gameplay mechanics, it's really not better. Anyway, it's less characters, but I just loved how the characters looked. I also loved how, you know, the story is important. Yeah. To, to the game, which was not the case for Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2. Too. Um, and then from then on, it was just, you know, I got to Fellow Fury 2, which is, I was amazed by all the characters. I remember like seeing Kim for the first time. I was, uh, at the time I was, I was uh, practicing Taekwondo. So like I had a Taekwondo character in my game. I was really amazing. And then of course, Samurai Showdown. And um, Samurai okay, Showdown, that's first that's time nice. I saw it was on the arcades. Uh, and I was, I was amazed at how big those characters looked. And how detailed. Yeah. And from, from then on, it was just, you know, one game after the other. Samurai Showdown is trying to... I love the stories. I always wanted... And again, there was no internet at the time. So, like, every now and then you find, like, something in a magazine about their story. Maybe it was not even true, but then you believe it because that's the only source of information you had. And it just, you just... You keep... You kept, like, running all those stories in your head. And, of course, when the, when the anime happened, I remember getting the first Fatal Fury and second Fatal Fury and Samurai Showdown. Like, I got those on VHS. Uh, I was, I was like from France because um, my aunt lived in France. She sent it to me, and I was just, I watched those, those, those three anime hundreds of times. So it's just been like that, just being one game after the other, always enjoying the SNK games. And King of Fighters '94, when it came out in '94, I, I saw it at the arcades, and I was just, I just went crazy. Okay, I've got to get some quarters and just put put it in the end in, in the cabinet because I always love. I couldn't afford the. I couldn't afford an AES back in the day. It was I, I've never seen one in Morocco hell. to be honest. I I didn't even dream of having one. It was just way over there. It's not something you don't even dream about. It's that, yeah. that expensive, you know. Yeah. But I I was able to play the games that were ported to the uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis and Game Boy as well. So yeah, I played the G- 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 Game Boy Advance King of Fighters games for hundreds of times. I know some people don't like those, but I love. I just love playing them hundreds of hours. Like I was on, it's like the only, yeah. I always love their character designs of their games. And besides, yeah, the, most people, remec- including myself, mostly recognize SNK. SNK is through the Neo Geo era, which is by many their best era. But, but today they're trying to like slowly get back to, the, to their greatness. So they're basically using their IPs to slowly get back to get enough money to make a new IP or so. But I I want to imagine what their new fighting game if they manage to make a new IP. It. Yeah, I saw I saw they um you know like as, as as you probably saw on the internet like they're talking about they're interested in doing new IPs and and honestly I mean I'm more excited about seeing them revive old ones that make new ones. I would love to see a new Fatal Fury. You know, a lot of people are yes. saying want to see Garou too. I I I want to see a more proper fail of fury than a garu like I, I love the garu characters but i want a fail of fury like something like a real about three Style. or whatever you want to call it yeah uh, or a reboot of the first fatal fury game because the first fatal fury game didn't age well the gameplay especially it needs to yes. update it in the style of kof 14 but more like story driven but it's not like 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 kof style but you have the choices of three characters still but it's more story driven each time you win a match, it goes to a cutscene or so. Well, they they tried to do that. Remember with the uh, with the Hyper Ninja sixty four the um, and and later on on PlayStation, which is the uh, um, Wild Ambition, Fatal Fury Wild Ambition, yes, which was a retelling of the first Fatal Fury. 
but again, that game is not. It's it's, it's, it's an okay yeah. game. It's not. It's not the best. Yeah. But yeah, I would love. I mean, I would love to see them do a reboot of that series. To be honest, but w- will they go for a reboot or will they go for a for a like a sequel slash reboot kind of like what they do with Samurai Showdown? Either way, I would love for them to see again. Go back to Fatal Fury, World Heroes. I mean, there's a lot of great IPs World that SNK Hero. has. They need to go. I, uh, the villains of World Heroes are. I like Neo Deal from World Heroes. Favorite character yeah. in the series, because SNK makes some good villains. Besides you hating them, like sucking up all your quarters dry. But yeah, yeah the, the SNK bosses are, you know, it's uh, they're legends. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, you get you don't have a problem reaching that boss, but once you go to that boss, you gotta be ready to to yeah. just uh, you know throw in more quarters for sure. Yeah, but SNK games like Art of Fighting too. I saw your video and I thought I thought my emulator was busted, but the ROM was busted because it was so hard. But <laughs> nope, it's the S the AI. It's like the SNK boss AI. It's a really good yeah. game, really beautiful, but it's AI ruined the game. Yeah, see that Auto Fighting 2, I didn't play it at the arcade. I played it on Super Nintendo and I and I have no memory if it was difficult or not. And then when I was doing when I was working on the on the history video, I, I started, you know, I played on the Neo Geo and I was it's amazing. It's 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 way too hard. You have no yeah. idea. You can't you can't do anything, really. I mean, I barely like defeated the first two or three characters. I think I, I reached the third character before I just it was impossible. It was the CPU really like it counters whatever you do. So it's it yeah. was insane. It was insane, yeah. Hopefully we won't have games. I mean, we're not going to have games like that, but it's just, uh, it's crazy. I'm surprised it was a hit at the arcades in Japan, but because exactly. normally that would have killed Art of Fighting right then and there. Exactly. It was yeah, an improvement, a- but it's AI just, what the, f- like, like, I can't beat the first people, let alone you got yeah. to the third one. Yeah. It's uh, and funny thing is that if you want to hit, you know, reach the real boss, Geese, you actually have to get to Geese without losing a single match, which was which was even more difficult. So it's, uh, but again, the, the the era was different. You know, like back in the day, you would you would uh, you know you wouldn't have access to as many games as we have now. Like if if I mean even at the time when I had the Super Nintendo or Genesis, you know, there was no you know if you wanted a game, you buy a game. It lasts you for you know. Six months, maybe a year, you only have that one game. So it was challenging in a good way because you try to get, you get better and better. Your money. Your but money's nowadays, out of it. something like that will never, will never work. Yeah. I remember, you, I remember, you just gave me a flashback because we were like, don't have a lot of money. So basically that one game, you had to like, basically get your money's worth. Yeah. And if, even if the game sucks and you said, hey, let me just play it so many times to start to grow on you. I remember renting E6 from a friend from like from high from high school, and I did not like the game at first because I went to the wrong areas and so. And then I slowly started to get used to the mechanics and everything, and then I started to love it. And then E became my favorite series, one of my favorite hack and slash games. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You could you had to you had to give more time to the game you buy, whatever it is. Sometimes you end up exactly getting a bad game, and that is you know tough that's luck. It. You gotta you gotta work with that. But that's uh that's for example, I as I said, I couldn't afford I couldn't afford the Neo G, obviously. King of Fighters uh ninety five was released on the PlayStation. I had a a US version PlayStation and that was you know region coded at the time. And I was leaving in Morocco and games that came out here are European version. So I could never get the King of Fighters to work on the PlayStation, which was very frustrating. So I had the Game Boy version. And I played that thing like, dude, I can't I can't even yeah, probably months if you just put all the hours together or years. So, and again, it was just the one game that you play every day, every single day until you, you know everything about it. So the difficulty thing doesn't matter anymore because you know how the CPU is going to react. That's kind of cool because that reminds me, like I said before, before we had a problem, that I played the, the Howling Blood, Howling Blood on, on, on GBA, the KOFs 1 and 2. And I played those to death to the point I played them on its hardest mode and doing like super combos on the fly, like <laughs> on its hardest mode. It's like the only Neo Geo SNK t- style game, KOF games I managed to do so. Uh, uh, that, those actually one of the two games, one of the only uh, KOF games I haven't played beside like few minutes. 
Yeah, you didn't like those. I didn't know. I didn't get a chance. I didn't have it. I uh, I think, I think I got one uh, from Blockbuster. I was I was in the U.S. at the time, and I I didn't have time to. Something happened. I don't know if there was school or something, but I didn't. I only played it for like few minutes, maybe half an hour or so, and then I I couldn't get the game later on. So. Yeah. Yeah, love those times. But what are your feelings when SNK? Even though I was like born in '92. And I was like starting to get to like PlayStation becoming a gamer. And let me tell you to that. When I was a kid, I always looked up to a, na- uh, a, k- a guy in the neighborhood by the name of Dawu. Because I, like I looked him to like an older model figure because he's like the ultimate gamer. He had like Nudge the Zelda. He had like the Sega Dreamcast. He had all those, those things. Mm-hmm. I really miss that guy. But, but every, but. But back to on topic, but basically when you, what were we on before, before I went to that little seg- seven with it? Oh yeah. Uh, Be- besides yeah. SNK games. Oh yeah. Now I realized when, when SNK went bankrupt in 2000, I didn't know because I barely had access to the internet. And, and what are your thoughts? Actually, I remember, I remember exactly that day I was, I was in school as a friend of mine who's also a gamer and he came to me, he's like, dude, SNK went bankrupt and now it's being purchased by this company called Aruze. I think it was Aruz. a Korean company. I can't remember. It was, yeah, it's a Korean company. It was a Japanese company. Yeah. It, was, it, it really destroyed Iji Kurosaki's dream to the point it was so bad that he actually bought his IPs back in the form of Playmore. And that's how the name yeah. SNK Playmore lasted for so many years. Yeah. Till the, it's revival, but I didn't notice because I was like a kid. I didn't have access to the internet a lot. I wasn't around that much gamers, but but it was really like it was like really devastating and whatnot. And there weren't yeah, the same was, ever again. Looking at that time, you know, it was like almost a custom now to have a new King of Fighters every year. So looking forward yeah. to what's uh, King of you know, Fighters two thousand two, two thousand three, yeah, yeah, and then it 2004, just, it was two thousand five. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they kept kept doing the games, though. They could. That's uh, you know, they got King of Fighters uh, two thousand one after that, uh, but terrible. then it just felt different to me, you know. So, yeah, it wasn't the same. I like King no. of, King of Fighters 03. Though, don't kill me. I like 03. I I haven't those again. One of the you have the games that came out between two thousand and two. So you have KOF two thousand two, two thousand and three, and eleven. Uh, those games they didn't play much. They were at the time when I was going for school. Uh, I was, you know, working two jobs. It was, it was like, like really busy, so I did not get to enjoy those games, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I know, for example, Eleven is is a huge deal. Everybody's talking about Eleven, Loved but it. those Loved games with the, you know, like the 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 uh, tag mechanic, I haven't played them much, besides, you know, like a couple hours or so. Um, so unfortunately I didn't, that's, that's why I didn't, you know, I'm only getting back to some of those games like 2002, I'm, I'm getting back to unlimited match. Now I've been playing it lately. Just, you know, I have game. free time. So I really want to, you know, try those games again for, give them the time that I couldn't have done before. Yeah. Besides those, what are your, what's, what's your other types of games that I like to play? My other types of games I like to play are like super robot wars, like your ACE combat, which I loved it, loved the series to death. As I, for as me, you... I like. Uh, I mean, I like action games. I like big budget games. Um, currently, trying to play, not playing because I don't have time. But I'm trying to play um, uh, Red Dead Redemption too. So I like those, you know, big budget games with good story and whatnot. Fighting games, I gotta play most of them. I try to play most of them. I'm a big uh, Street Fighter fan. I'm also a big Mortal Kombat fan. Um, but it's mainly if I can't play fighting games, you know, I play those. You know, I have to select like uh, God of War, for example, is a game that I've been trying to play for the last couple of years since it came out. I love the new Spider-Man game that came out last year, I think. Platinum did. I love that game, too. Yeah, I'm also a big Marvel nerd, so that's... If anything yeah. has Marvel on it, I gotta, you, I gotta, you buy I gotta it. try it. Yeah. yeah. Like me with SNK, I gotta, you gotta buy your Marvel. But yeah. I also love Japanese role-playing games, especially the old-school ones. And I love shooter, shoot-em-ups as well. I love the arcade shoot-em-ups, like Blazing Star... That was a really oh, yeah. good game. Yeah, and and I still I still you know I still have a special place in my heart for Mario Mario games. I grew yeah. up on Mario Bros. and the Nintendo NES, at the Super Mario Bros. Three. That was uh, for me. That was the pinnacle of gaming at the time. So if there's a Mario game, I have to play it. 
Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog, even though in recent years he wasn't that good, but I just love the character so much. He resonates to me a lot because I love going fast. He has a wonderful personality. What do you think? Do you watch the movie or do you think of the movie? I love the freaking movie. You mean the not? I love the freaking movie. I love the characters. It surprised me. I thought it was, I just want to see the movie because they changed the character design for Sonic. And yeah. it just and I just said, oh hell, the hell with it. I'll just go for the for the respect of the creator, the directors, and whatnot. And my God, it was a wonderful crafted movie. They like they really cared about Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I mean compared to other other video games movies, it was actually it was pretty good. They had they had fun at the theaters. I uh, took yeah. my daughter. She's uh, she's still I and mean, she's still five. She's still learning about all these characters. But it was uh, it was it was a really good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How like. I, I, yeah, yeah. Even though you have a family and whatnot, I don't have a family, but I'm taking my time on that because I'll be really busy then. I'm just taking my time on that, but mashallah. Yeah, dude, yeah, you have no idea, man. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, um, it's, you know, it changes everything. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I'm starting, yeah, I just recently quit McDonald's like two months ago or so. And even though the money's a little bit, but I do not like the job. Like it was, I accidentally like uh, uh, submitted a job application to like a far McDonald's, like for an hour away by a walk, by the bike almost every day from like eight to four, 8 PM to 4 AM. And I did that oh, for dude. a couple months and it was like hell. Like yeah. next, and I said to myself, next time I should uh, uh, submit an application to a closer location. Or where I can oh, seek yes, a character, fun. travel from. Because yeah. if that bike breaks down, you're freaking screwed. Oh yeah, that's it's kind of dangerous too. I mean, yeah, yeah right. it is dangerous, especially. But besides video games, what are your other hobbies? Um, movies. I uh, love watching again um, movies, um, animations, and stuff like that. I don't, I don't do much, but again, I have to be very picky because again, time restricts. You know, like uh, sports, I like I like to I like to hit the gym as much as I can. I love. I, I miss the gym. I wasn't I wasn't like that. You know, it's uh, it's just uh, like when I grew up, I was your typical nerd. You know, like I would just yeah. uh, read. You know, comic books and, and mangas and play video games. So I was I was a bit, uh, you know, uh, inside guy, a bit heavy. So, yeah. but it, that changed. You know, as as I grew up, I just realized a big mistake I did, and I just tried to, try to, you know, get get in shape as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, you had like a special episode you want to want to talk about that, but, but I hated I I did not like eating healthy for a long time to like I had like some like problems and so, and I said to myself, man. I should get back yeah. into shape for my body, for my heart. Yeah. Lower on the yeah. salt and sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's same here. Same yeah. here. It's not. It's not. It's not easy though. I mean, those. Yeah. You know, addictive. It's, it's not easy. It is. It is addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially again if you if you you know as gamers you know have you have that uh, you know uh, that bad image that people always show gamers just staying at home and eating and just you know getting fat and everything. It's I mean it's not true, but then if you're really like a hardcore gamer, sometimes you end up. You know, sitting for long times and, and not thinking of doing other healthy stuff. But uh, yeah, so and then as I said, movies. But again, I I love you know like action movies, not you know superhero movies and stuff like that. That's something I love. Yeah, and the type of movies I have love are like besides some superhero movies, I mostly like Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get into like Tokusatsu now with Common Rider, those guys in the rubber suits oh, yeah. and whatnot. I love anime to death, especially love the Gundam series here. I have some on my shelf here and oh, robot cool. anime. Anime, I've been a huge, you know, I'm a huge fan of anime, but lately I haven't been watching much. And I just, I find myself that I'm not enjoying them as much as I did. Like I'm not enjoying it, but like I'm, I'm not into the slow burn kind of anime that takes forever before things get moving on. Yeah. I just feel like I'm always like, okay, come on, what's next? What's next? And that's, yeah. that's weird. Like I, um, I started watching Bucky uh, for the yeah. first time uh, a few days ago, and it just because uh, they heard, heard a lot of things about it. Uh, but it just I'm like, okay, and I don't I don't see the big deal yet. Maybe I'll get used to it. But it just yeah. some some things that you love keep you know the you know perspective it changes. Well, I guess. yeah, I didn't hate that feeling like 
for the longest time, I thought Gundam Wing was freaking awesome, but I was wrong. It was like, didn't age well. <laughs> but yeah. over time, I started to get used to it again because the animation quality was in TV. I didn't know about budget, like television anime budget and whatnot. And I started to appreciate the Wing Gundam again, even though my favorite mobile suit's now the Talgis 3. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh... But again, but still, I still enjoy some things that I enjoyed as a young yeah. kid. So, for example, that Fatal Fury anime, and I, I can still watch that, no problem. I mean, I don't know. I see a lot of flaws now that I didn't back then, yeah. especially the second one and the movie, but I still, I still love watching them. Yeah. One thing I don't like to watch anymore is the Samurai Showdown anime. I used to love that one when I was a kid, but yeah, I just don't like, like, like it anymore. Oh, like, oh, like, oh, like. <laughs> that one's bad. Yeah. Auto Fighting one? I don't know if you've oh. seen the Auto Fighting one. No, it's no, the most no, horrible no, no. Out of all of them. God, no, no, no. Let's not, let's forget about that one. That one was like a nightmare. That does the, yeah. that they don't even look like the characters. Like, it's like, yeah. the, like the, like the anime is like the character designers be like, whatever. Like he didn't even play yeah, the game. It looks like they like, didn't even try, you know, like, like, yeah, it's, it's okay. You know, SNK fans will love it. I'm sure. <laughs> nope. That's for the wrong reasons for like <laughs> memeing it and making fun of it. But Art of Fighting had promise for an anime. Like, Especially when those games they have the characters get hit so hard they get bruises, which I never seen in a fighting game besides Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like punch it. Especially the sprite ones, like you punch an enemy so hard, it start their face was swelling up <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah, and that's that was in nineteen ninety three or nineteen ninety two, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, so so long time. Actually, in, yeah, nineteen ninety two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, uh, and they they. And that's the thing with those anime. That's what I don't understand. Because usually, you know, like what these guys struggle with is taking a game like, okay, again, uh, some people, someone's going to kill me for this. I mean, because somebody said on Twitter that I keep bringing Street Fighter uh, games because of the lack of stories. I'm a fan of Street Fighter, but it's true. There's not much story in the game. But anyway, so those games are difficult to make a story out of it because if you read all the bios and whatnot, it still does not give you a clear picture on how you're going to do this. is yeah. Street Fighter 2 a tournament? Is it not a tournament, for example? Yeah. Auto Fighting was, was a story-driven game. Yeah. You had the, no you're going from point A to point B with all the details you need. All you have to do is just adapt. But then yeah. it's that, that game Street that they go World. and decide to do something completely out of the blue. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's still, it's still fathom me. Yeah, but remember Yuri Urasaki. She was like started out as a damsel in distress character. Correct. And Correct. and when Art of Fighting Two came out, she was like, "Nope, I'm not being a damsel in, in distress anymore." So she basically trained her butt off, yeah, to not be kidnapped again. And again, that's what I was saying. Story driven. Not, you don't see that in other games. You see, like game, you know, except okay, Mortal Kombat now are trying that with the you know their story mode and whatnot. But but like in SNK games, you see, you know, these characters progressing getting better and whatnot there's a story you know like this there's a path of them of growing and learning which was great at the time this is the 90s talking yeah. about games in the 90s having those this much the story. story depth that can some say, games now don't yeah. have can i say something now that reminds me remember kyo kurusanagi and night kurus kurusanagi 96 Dill's never heard of his iconic reka style yeah. shota style Due to the story of, of Ignis basically destroying Kyo when their first encounter, to the point Kyo, out of like the blue, which he never do it, does again, he hates training, but he basically, he basically changed, the SNK changed his moveset from like Shota to Rekka. It was like really odd back in the day. Like people be like, what the hell's wrong with his moveset? Yeah, yeah. Which is I and never that's a saw big in a gamble. Fight. That that was a big gamble that you change characters that much, and the game mechanic it was completely overhauled. You know, like from King of Fighters ninety four to ninety five, you can see the progression, and yeah. then ninety six is just completely it went did. to another way. But luckily, yeah. it did pay off. I mean, people did you know enjoy, enjoy the it. new style, and that's pretty much what we've had since then. Yeah, till like ninety eight or so. When when back in ninety nine, when they started to bring back Keo, you know those two Keo clones, right? You probably knew about yes. this. They, they had problems, like, should we do his Rekka style? Do we do his traditional, traditional Shota style? And you know what they did? Made two clones yeah. and then made, uh, here's a bonus. Let's give out for a secret boss. You can unlock his, the Nest Kyo, which is yeah. basically a uh, more powerful version of his Rekka form. Yeah. 
which is kind of cool because SNK now, besides they're like the kings and knights, but now we got SNK like here's some wallpapers, here's a here's a here's a upgraded graphic bonus, here's new a season pass for free, here's a new yeah. Neo Geo collection game for freaking free, which has just yeah. came out on yeah. and Epic Games, which is never heard of. Like holy crap, I love SNK even now, even more now because it gives stuff for free. But you know that 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 was very smart because if I mean if you've, yeah. you've, you you're on Twitter so you saw when they announced Samurai Showdown 2019 exclusivity for Epic Games when everybody just went crazy and mad at SNK and um, saying that how how horrible the Epic Games Store is how this and that and personally I've never tried Epic Games Store until the game was released but so what they decided to do you know what we're gonna give you the collection for free you have one week to claim it you get it for free. Now everybody, everybody's gonna be trying the Epic Game Store, right? Yeah. And then they won't have a, if they're happy, of course, they won't have a problem buying somewhere Showdown 2019 on the Epic Game Store. So it was it was a really smart decision. Yeah. That it I was really surprised to see them do that. Really yeah, same surprised. here. Like a Neo Geo collection, which was hype for only like the Sam Show enthusiasts, but they did their butts off on that one. Especially look at the extras. Yeah. The extras alone, like it's like crazy. Like the creators. And the people who worked on the games, amazing stuff. The bios of yeah. the characters, but he, and, uh, soundtracks of each of the games. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, I, might, I might be the minorities here, but uh, for me, that's more important than the actual games themselves. Because, again, personally, I have access to those other games uh, in you know other forums, so I, I've played those games before, except yeah. Perfect, of course. Yeah. But it's those design you know, uh, documents that they have never before seen. Those, uh, you know, the interviews, two hours of interviews. That's Beautiful. just crazy. I love watching the interviews, man. I love, sorry about I haven't, I haven't, believe it, I have not had time to watch them yet. Every day I'm like, I'm going to watch them today. I have Same a, here. A problem. Yeah. It reminds me when I, play, I need to play Super Robot Wars on some of these games. Like, I'm like, due to, like, I don't have the time anymore. It's probably, I'm just getting older now, even though I have a ton of free time. I still get that moment, that, that that adult mindset like i said i sh i don't have the enough time anymore to invest a lot of time because back when i was a little kid we have a tv time limit for like six hours because they my my family wants to be like more active like read a book draw a picture like that yeah. we don't want to waste the time like playing video games or watching tv over six hours so i used those six hours wisely and it worked and it kind of worked because I did not like watching too much TV as a result. Yeah, yeah, true. But that's, also... That's, uh, yeah, go ahead. But also, one more... And also, the, the, the cool thing about, about the Neo Geo collection, besides those bonuses, is how the story on how 5 Special, 5 Perfect came to be. Like how they yeah. became on the collection... There was this guy like saying it was rumored to be a lost project. But over time, one of the devs managed to find a ROM on his outdated hard drive, which surprisingly still works on that early 2000s, like 90s style dinosaur, which he still managed to, to collect off the drive. And bam, insane. I wish I can get an interview with Crispy Kaiser or any of the SNK devs. Or that guy who managed to get the interview on how he managed to buy five special, but that'll be on a future episode. Cause I would love be to do that that'll though. Be great. I'll, I'll, I'll watch that for sure. Yeah, same here. Because I'm still starting off and I'm really thankful for you to like be on the first episode on like on the, the podcast and so. Yeah, and no problem, man. Yeah. Besides, like, COVID, like, it's really amazing how the internet is. Not Twitter, though. Twitter's, like, all that drama and whatnot. But this is the internet, which I like. like sometimes, like, how technology progressed. We can, I can actually talk to you in real time, record, even though we're, like, thousands of miles away. I know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, somebody was saying, you know, like, uh, you know, I got this message. It was kind of funny, you know, like, because everybody's down, you know, with, you know, what's happening in COVID-19 and everything. And they said, well, if you think that COVID-19 is bad, imagine if we got it before the internet. So, so yeah. I'm like, okay, well, that, that, that makes a point. <laughs> yeah, that makes, makes a, point. a perfect point. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Th- th- I technically mostly like play game play games and like go on Twitter now, but I should take a break on the Twitter because hello? On on yeah, the Twitter yeah. because like I thought you froze for a second, but yeah. you just checking some stuff up. Like I don't wanna talk about Twitter that much because the drama going on and whatnot, but but for right now, uh yeah, I already did like the basic intro, in, introductions, interview, and whatnot. But I'm like just looking forward to like doing more content with the SNK fandom. Even though I just started with you, I'm starting to get into That's other. That's a good things. thing, man, because like you know the SNK is, is the SNK fandom is is still obscure. You know, like we know. A lot of people by their usernames and see them on Twitter, but we don't know who these people are, and it's yeah. and it's a great idea to have this kind of of you know of, of interviews with people who are in the same yeah. community. Yeah, and I think I think you're doing great. This is really a great first step. So oh, thank you. you know, I really just, appreciate just that. I'm honored. That, man. I'm really honored. Keep going with that. But let me tell you something, and especially for those who are hearing or watch or watching this podcast, I have it, it, it's not final though. But I contacted Final, one of the best KOF players in the Middle East. We just had to arrange his time because he's really busy. It's not final yet. But I'll give you an update on that. Uh, yeah, he's a great guy. You know, it's funny thing, Freonel is, is also from, from Morocco. Is, uh, and believe it or not, we're both huge SNK fans. We've been living in the same city all these years, and I've only met him like last year. It's never had a chance. Crazy. Actually, I didn't even know he was he was from my city. Yeah. But now it's uh, we're pretty good friends. It's actually his his literally like lives like a couple blocks from 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 my house. So wow. He yeah. probably sometimes if he had a time play like a quick match at Sam show. Well, we yeah, we did it before because he 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 was he was in another city before he moved him back to to my city like literally maybe like three weeks before before the whole um, you know coronavirus started. So we met a couple times and then and then everybody was just like, locked down. No, 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 yeah, like, yeah. So. yeah. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to die. But again, online we still play online, so that um, yeah, yeah, it still kicks my ass online. But yes, that's not a problem. Oh, yeah, I played Sam's show. I met. I'm lucky to even win a couple matches. Unlike some people, sometimes I get crushed. Sometimes I win matches. Like strategic, like with Samurai Showdown, it's not like Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter, or the KOF franchise or Guilty Gear. It's strategic. One heavy blow, if you miss, your opponent can counterattack. When you do a light attack, you have more frank. You, you're it, 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 you're lucky to like easy to block. It's mostly with frames and how this position and whatnot. It's mostly, that's correct. That's yeah. the thing. That's that's uh, and that's something that I'm sure Fiona will tell you. He actually tells me that and says it so many times that you have you know like if you're just starting out in fighting games and you wanna you wanna have a chance at actually you know like in, from an esports perspective, go with Samurai Showdown. It's it's an easy game to get into. Yeah, like, so it's not it's not an easy game in general. You still have to learn, but it's easy to learn. Get into while the mechanics. King of Fighters, King of Fighters for new new gamers, and I'm not sure how they're gonna address that in King of Fighters 15. Is that King of Fighters? Once you get into it for the first time, if you don't know how the King of Fighters games are, you you're gonna get lost. You know, first yeah. of all, you have three characters. You have this large roster, and it's very technical. You miss one combo, your opponent is gonna destroy you <laughs> with 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 one combo after the other. Once you get that's I actually had this in the King of Fighters 14. So. I love the yeah. King of Fighters, but again, as I said, I stopped playing um, competitively back in the 2000s. So when I, I'm trying to get back to the King of Fighters 14, whenever I play online, I just I just get beaten, you know, Cra- like savage. Same here. Like I played King when I on a good day, when I have good internet. For don't hang me, people. I use Wi-Fi because there's no while I can't get a router like connect oh. to PS4 right there, but. I get savagely beaten to the point I was like, I was even lucky to even land blows or kill a character, knock out, a, take out a character before one yeah, character takes out my that's party. That's exactly what was happening. But I said, you know what? I'll just keep at it. And I yes, just, I had I fun. If you, if you see in the streams, I do, I do a stream every Tuesday for the King of Fighters 14. And, and I noticed I'm, I'm much better now. I'm still not the best out there, but I, I, I win some matches, which was never the case. So yeah. You learn- that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. I I, ha- I like the challenge, but the problem with 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 the you know with 
gamers in general, not not everybody has that patience of yeah. just going and trying and trying and trying again. So yeah. that's a tricky, I think this is a very tricky situation that yeah. I'm not sure how SNK is going to address with the King of Fighters 15. How yeah, are you going to get those players who do not have the patience, those players who are, you know, Street Fighter Five players, they have never played a King of Fighters before. How are you going to get them not to get because... into your, you know, complicated, somewhat yeah. complicated system? Yeah. Because you have the rolling system too. You got the charge charge system. You got the max mode. Yeah. And it's kind of complicated for a Street Fighter player because Street Fighter plays like like combo block 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 combo block block time combo block 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 super combo. King of Fighters max mode roll super combo. And jumps like, you have jumps. you need you need you need, a, you need a week just to learn how the different jumps work yeah. you know like you have three types of jumps jump combos so it'll be interesting to see what they're gonna do because because i really believe you can go fighters 15 is really like an ultimatum for snk getting new fans to the franchise it's yes. really it's a make or break and i'm pretty sure they know that, that yeah so it's it's really tricky i don't want them to dumb it down to make it easy Same for here. everyone that's because that's gonna kill the franchise for all the fans yeah. But this definitely needs some sort of overhaul that is like kind of like makes everybody happy. It'll be difficult, yeah. but I'm just I can't wait to see what they're gonna yeah what they're gonna come up with. It's going it's gonna be sound risky though. S and K fans are gonna kill me for this. For its story mode, like in Tekken, teach you how to play the games and mechanics, make it fun, some like a mini game or so, make it fun to get people to get used to the mechanics. Like, Situation for max mode, situation for rolls, situation for like jump and combos yeah. and get ease people into like learning the systems in a fun way. Like Arc System works in Guilty Gear with Zerd and whatnot. An another complicated game with wave dashes, dashes, air combos, crazy combos, chains. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, so it's again, hopefully we're going to get a first look at the King of Fighters 15 soon. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see something by uh, next month, by uh, by Evo Finals. Yeah. Uh, now, whether we're gonna get something next week on the yeah. 23rd is uh, yeah. that's something that I'm not really sure we're gonna see anything before Same here. Evo, to be honest. Same here. I just suspect yeah. SNK to announce like a update or like a new character for the DLC of Sam Show instead. That's probably not what it's gonna be. Remember, we still have one. We still have one DLC character for season two that they have not revealed, which they're saying it's gonna be unexpected, which kind of kind of gives me the idea that it's gonna be a guest character. Uh, yeah. It's the only reason that it's been, you know, I mean, they showed it's Iroha, which was which was the crazy, yeah. you know, uh, everybody wanted Iroha. They showed Iroha didn't didn't show that character, so it's clearly yeah. someone unexpected and probably probably a guest character now. Which guest character? That's that's something that we're Let probably me guess. Mitsurugi. Same time period, make him like appear in the Namco game. Make him put have his, you know how Mitsu uh, how Umaru worked in Soul Calibur. Have no, Mitsurugi. He he's like more like whenever he like he has more fluid movements, like you see in like a triple A title. Samus Showdown's a double A title, but it's less restrictive and easier to play. But with Sam Show, I wonder how they're going to deal with Mitsurugi's gameplay, like. How they're going to impl implement his moves into like the gameplay because a way more restrictive with Samurai Shodown rather than like flashy combos of Soul Calibur and whips of Soul Calibur. My brother is a big fan of Soul Calibur. He'll explain more about it if you manage to like come to like another episode or so. Yeah, and I've uh, Soul Calibur. I haven't I mean I I like the first first one on the Dreamcast, the Soul Edge. Same here. Soul Calibur also on the Dreamcast, but. Uh, it was at the time when uh, 2D games were pretty much dead, 2D fighting games, and everything we had was 3D. So yeah. I was, I didn't have a choice. But once we got 2D fighters back, that's it. I'm not, I'm not that interested in 3D fighters anymore. Yeah, I mostly with the 2D fighters, I prefer those rather than 3D. Not because I'm an old head, because it's art. Look at Marvel versus Capcom. Those sprites aged well, to the point you're watching, you're reading a. Are watching a cartoon slash comic book. It plays sure. well. Besides, like the War Machine or Iron Man, like Infinite, but and minus that, but it's still easy to play. 
easy to easy to beautiful to look at. Guilty Gear, beautiful sprites, wonderful gameplay, great music. Under Night and Birth, a more niche like fighting game, really fun. Love the graphics style and everything. It's just with two D fighting games, I love those more. Yeah. Rather than 3D, because 3D is like the graphics don't age well. The gameplay's more restrictive, like you see in uh, a Wild Ambition with with the Fatal Fury franchise. Yeah, I love the games, but they're restrictive as hell. Yeah, that's uh, not, you never in terms of fighting games, you never beat 2D fighters. So nope. unfortunately, sprites work in general is dead. We're not gonna see it. We're Anymore. definitely not going to see it again. One, the, the next, the closest thing is, of course, something like the cell-shaded animation, like what yeah. we have in Guilty Gear. And I would love to see SNK do that. But, yeah. uh, you know, honestly, I don't think they're going to do that for the King of Fighters 15 because, because they're not at that KOF, level yet. Yeah. Not, not just that, but isn't Yashiyuki Oda in an interview said that KOF was supposed to be, like, realistic looking, but due to the times, due to the time, Hardware, hardware back then they couldn't like have realistic graphics, so they had they stuck with sprites. It was supposed no, to be really look, pretty. It was supposed to be really realistic looking due to Shinkiro's designs. Everyone looked all realistic and everything. Mm. That's and that's what they're supposed to aim for: a more realistic looking characters and whatnot. With that, and one so we'll reason- see. I mean, I, I really can't wait to see. Just, I mean, I hope they're gonna give us just a glimpse maybe this next yeah. week and say that the full trailer will be in an Evo. But I would love to just, you know, see how it's gonna look. I'm just too curious. Um, I know, I know what they they want with Samurai Showdown. They said it's gonna look completely different than Samurai Showdown. So I can't wait to see what they have in stores for us. Okay. And the and any last words before we sign off or anything? Uh, no, man. Just want to say that thank you for having me. Uh, I think this is a great idea just to get yeah. the SNK community so that, you know, we know each other, really. Uh, it's yeah. a good thing to meet uh, the people. And you know, we're a small community and we definitely need to, you know, stick Grow. together. So, yes. Again, thank you so much. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Thank you, too. I hope you have a great night now because it's getting really late on your end. So, it, really it is. Glad you really came. You came. You're keep doing your content. It's going to get really better. And I hope, and I hope you get, you get to go to Japan one day and finish that project before the COVID hit, before all yeah. money hits and whatnot. That was a bummer. That was a bummer, man. I was, yeah. I had my ticket, I had everything ready. I got my visa. And then it was, it was that day COVID actually time. when I got the, I got the visa, then the whole thing like, collapsed. <laughs> like, like, yep. I know. Surprise. I know. But but yeah, I'm hoping, hoping to you know as soon as 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 possible, as soon as this thing uh, gets uh, gets you know blown away, hopefully. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And but one more thing I have to say for my for 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 our viewers, let's say this is just the starting point here. I'm going to get better, like he is. He's going to get better. And please support our podcast by going on Spotify, go on Google Podcast, go on Anchor, go on the YouTube channel, click that like button. Click that, make a comment for improvements, not trolls, but make an improvement on the, on the videos. What you like to see next? What are your suggestions? Go on my Twitter page or Twitter, Twitter page to see what guests you want. And I'll probably think of a better time. Again, please subscribe to any of those services. I really appreciate it if you do. And that's all to say for now. I hope you enjoy this podcast. This is the Omega, 9, Omega 92 Closing the doors of the Omega, uh, Omega 13 dimension, which I'm going to call the podcast. And hope you meet, hope you like this interview with my guest here, Neo Geo Now. Really good guy. Subscribe to his channel because he appreciates it. Sure do. That's all to say for now, people. Peace. <laughs>